Welcome back to Mrs. O'Gram's Maths. We are doing worked solutions for the D&D resource booklet uh, for integration and this is the one for practice external assessment number three. Um, so of course a thank you to D&D resources for allowing me to share their materials in this way and make these worked solution videos for you. Let's take a look at question one. Now before we dig into actually integrating it I'm going to separate that into two different um, or two separate fractions. We can do that when um, we have just one thing as the denominator there. Now if we do x square rooted, that's the same as saying x to the half. And if we do a division of powers, then we have x to the half divided by x to the one, which means we subtract the power. So a half minus one is a negative half. So this becomes x to the negative half. Four over x integrates to four log x. Um, x to the minus half, we raise the power by 1, which gives us a half, divide by the new power, so minus 1 divided by a half is minus 2, plus c. Part b asks us to use Simpson's rule. So I've grabbed that from the formula sheet just here. Now h is the gap between our x values, those top values there, so that's a gap of 3. So if we divide that by 3, um, for the third times h it's going to cancel out but I'll pop it in for the sake of showing how we're using the formula. Now we take the first y value which is 0, y n is the last y value, then we do 4 times all of the odd ones, so this is the 0 one here, so this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and this is the sixth or last one. So all of the y ones, so that's this one, actually let's put some colour to pick them out, so this one, this one, and this one, so all of the, the odd numbered ones, oh uh, yes that's right, so 2.1, 4.6, 2.5, go in there, and then the even, um, the ones in the even positions, they get multiplied by 2, like so. Let's put that into the calculator. We don't need to worry with the zeros of course, um, plus 2.5 and then add on the 2 times 3.4 and 4.2. We get an answer of 52 and the units we're measuring in is meters squared. Part C, we're doing integration to find the area under a curve. We've got limits of pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2, and the curve equation is 2 cos 2x sine x plus 2. Now, we can't integrate um, this function as it is at the moment. The cos 2x sine x, we don't um, have the ability to integrate that. So let's take a look at the formula sheet. Um, let's just pull that up, and we'll find something useful on there. So if we look over here at these products um, and just switch back to what we were looking for, we want cos of something, sine of something. So that will be this one here. So 2 cos a sine b is sine of a plus b minus sine of a minus b. So this will be equivalent to doing the integral of pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, um, so it was the first bit was to do sine of the two things added, so that's 2x plus x, so that's 3x, minus sine of those two things subtracted, so 2x minus x is x, and then we've got the plus 2. Now sine differentiates, oh sorry, integrates to negative cos. And because we've got the 3 in there, we need to divide by a 3 for the reverse chain rule. We're dividing by the derivative of what's inside. Sine, um, again, integrates to minus cos. It was already a minus, so that's going to turn it into a plus. And then 2x between 3 pi by 2, 3 pi by 2, and pi by 2. Okay, so let's sub in those limits, and I'll just give myself plenty of space. We've got a third cos of 
3 pi by 2 times by 3 is going to be 9 pi by 2 cos 3 pi by 2 uh, plus 2 times 3 pi by 2 will just end up being 3 pi. Take away negative third cos 3x cos, oh, I didn't put the x in, 3 times pi by 2 cos of pi by 2 and 2 times pi by 2 which is just pi. Okay, I'll pause while I pop it into the calculator because that's going to take a little while. Okay, so I've done my checking. Cos of 9 pi by 2 is 0. Cos of 3 pi by 2 is 0. Um, so we're just left with 3 pi from that first bracket. Cos of 3 pi by 2 is 0. Cos of pi by 2 is 0. So we're left with pi from that bracket. So we have 3 pi minus pi. So that is all equal to 2 pi as our final answer. Now this one didn't say that you needed to give it in an exact form, so if you did it in decimals and it came out to the decimal equivalent of 6.283, that would be correct as well. Okay, looking at question D now, we've got um, something to do with um, rates of value uh, and they're being proportional. So we're probably looking at some um, something along the lines of population growth types of questions, although it's value growth that we're looking at here. So we're told the rate of change of the value is proportional to the value itself. So the rate at which that value is changing is proportional to, means we write equals k times the value itself. So those two things are proportional. Um, now you can skip straight to what that means um, as an equation, but I will separate the variables and show you how we get there um, in case you don't have that memorized. So bring v over to the left hand side, uh, keep k there, bring the dt over to the right and we'll integrate both sides. We then get the natural log of v is equal to kt plus c. So v is equal to e to the kt plus c. Um, using laws of powers, that would be times by e to the c, which is in itself a constant. So we write, rewrite that as um, a constant at the front. Now we use the values in the question um, so that we can work out those constants. See, bought the property in late 2010 for this much. Um, so we'll treat that as being our t equals zero point. So when t is zero, uh, the value is 6,500, and that's equal to a e to the 0. Well, e to the 0 is just 1, so a is 650,000. Five years later, we have a value of 9, uh, 920,000 is equal to, um, we've got a is 650,000, e to the k times 5, or 5k, um, because t is 5. So now 920,000 divided by 650,000 is 1.4. We will take the natural log of that because it's e to the 5k is equal to that. So we can undo that with um, taking natural logs. So 5k is equal to 0.347. And we divide that by 5 to work out the value of k. So k is 0 0.0695. Now I'm just going to move that up out of the way so I've got space to carry on. So over here we're now going to look at um, getting a solution to the question which was solve the equation and predict the value of the property in late 2020. So that's when t is 12. So when t is 12, we can substitute in to say our value will be equal to 650,000 e to the k, which was 0 0.0695 times 12. Okay, so I've still held that in my calculator. I'll times that by 12. Um, then we do e to the power of that answer and times it by 650,000. 
So that's one, four, nine, six, two, seven, seven. We're making a prediction. I'm not going to go all the way to cents. And in, in this context, it would make, um, uh, it would be appropriate to put an approximate value of around 1.5 million since we're talking about house prices. We've got quite a lot going on for question E here. We've actually got three curves. We're find, trying to find an area um, that is in between the three of them or other three lines. One of them is a straight line. For us to be able to do that, we need to find some intersection points. So we have three intersection points just here. Um, let's start with looking for the intersection of the line y equals ax and the line a over x, because that will be this first intersection point um, just here. So that means we'll have ax squared is equal to a, so x squared is equal to a over a, which is 1, so x would be plus or minus 1, and we can see from um, where we are on the axis that will be that x equals 1. Next, let's take a look at this one here. So that's the intersection of x cubed over a and a over x. So here we have x to the 4 is equal to a squared. We're in the positive quadrant, so we only need to worry about positive roots for this. Um, so x squared would be equal to a. x would be equal to the square root of a. So we have the square root of a here, and we had 1 from our first root there. Okay, and the third intersection point we're looking for now is when ax is equal to x cubed over a. So then we have a squared x is equal to x cubed. We can divide both sides through by x, so we get a squared is equal to x squared. So x equals a. Okay, now the first portion that we need to do for the area would be from um, the first intersection to the second intersection. So we'll do this bit of area first. Now that will be the integral between 1 and root a. Uh, the top line is the ax line here that we're doing for the edge of that area. The bottom of the area is this line here. So we'll take away a over x dx. Integrating that, we'll have ax squared over 2 minus um, natural log of x. Oh, we need the a natural log of x, and then sub in our values. Now, substitute in square root of a, putting that into a squared will give me an a, and then we times by the other a. So we've got a squared over 2 minus a log square root of a minus um, if we put a 1 in for x squared we will have a over 2 minus a log of 1 well log of 1 is just 0 so that one goes to 0 then if we have a think um, about the other area Let's do that in another color here. So this area just here, that will be to do the integral between root a and a. Uh, this time we have ax is our top line as that boundary of the area, and the bottom boundary of the area is this curve here. So let's take away x cubed over a. So have ax squared over 2 minus x to the 4 over 4a. And let's sub in those limits. So if I put in an a, I will get a cubed over 2 minus a to the 4 over 4a. And then we will put in the square root of a. So if I 
pop that into the x squared that become an a then it times gets times by another a so we have a squared over 2 um, x to the 4 if x is the square root of a that will be a squared over 4 a okay now total area will be to add those two pieces together. So a squared over a minus a log root a minus a minus two plus a cubed minus two minus a to the four over four a minus a squared over two plus a squared over four a. And we can see that some things cancel. So we have an, oh, a, just realized I wrote something down wrong just here that was an a squared over 2. So that plus uh, cancels with that that minus of the same term um, and we have a minus a to the 4 oh no wait there's some more simplifying that we can do I actually probably should have done it at this stage here simplifying that expression first but anyway we'll, we'll do it now that we're here um, we've got a to the 4 over 4a here so I can reduce that power um, on the top by 1 and cancel out the a on the bottom I've got a similar thing here we can divide through by a so we'll end up with we've got minus a natural log of root a the a terms, if I take a look at these two, I've got minus a half plus a quarter. So that will be minus a quarter. And the a cubed terms, I have a half minus a quarter. So that will be plus a cubed over four. Okay, moving on to question two. Okay, integrating each term here, we have 8x squared over 2 minus, um, since we have something over a function in um, x, that will be the natural log. So bring the 8 out uh, and then it'll be natural log of the bottom. Um, and then we need to divide through by the derivative of that bit that's in there, which is a minus 1. If we divide by minus 1, it turns this minus at the front into a plus and then plus c. The 8 over 2 we can simplify to be a 4 of course. Okay part b solving this differential equation. So first we need to integrate to get dy by dx. Um, if we increase this power by 1 we have a 3 divide by the 3 and we get a 4. We also need to divide by the the derivative of the inside but in this case it's just a 1. We're told that when x is 2 dy by dx equals 8. So 4 times 2 minus 1 cubed plus c will equal 8. So c must be 4. Then from there we can differentiate, sorry, integrate to get y. Um, so again we're going to take our power and increase it by 1 divide by that power so that would be 4 over 4 that's just a 1 um, the c was a 4 um, up in this bit just here we just worked that out to be oh gosh confusing all my colors here we go um, so then when we put if we integrate 4 we will get 4x and plus another constant I'm going to call k so we don't confuse it with the previous c. We're told that when y is 12 um, or when x is 2 y is 12 so we'll substitute in 12 is equal to 2 minus 1 to the 4 plus uh, 4 times 2 plus k. So 12 equals 1 plus 8 plus k so k must be 3. So therefore um, y is equal to x minus 1 to the 4 plus 4x plus 3. 
um, and that is everything. Okay, so I'm going to actually just pop it down here as the final answer. I thought there might be more to the, the question, but I've just gone back to check, and that's all we need to do. Okay, part C. Uh, we've got the graph of y equals natural log x minus 3. We want the area between the curve, the y-axis, and the lines 0 and 2. Now, the easiest way to do this is to reverse what you think of as doing the... What, normally, we would do area under a curve, and we'd do everything in terms of x's. Well, if we want the area that's on the other side, like this one, we um, can go between 0 and 2 and do everything in terms of y's. So what we would need, instead of it being y equals something in x, we need x equals something in y. So for that one, we would do e to the y and then plus 3. So now our area will be to integrate between 0 and 2 of e to the y plus 3. So x in terms of y instead of y in terms of x, because we're reversing everything that we would normally do for finding areas. And we'll, we will integrate that with respect to y. Now e to the y doesn't change if it's integrated, and then we get plus 3y between 0 and 2. So this will be e to the 2 plus uh, 3 times 2 is 6 minus e to the 0 plus 3 times 0, which is 0. e to the 0 is just 1, so what we have now is e to the 2 plus 6 minus 1, so plus 5. And if we want that in decimal form, it would be e to the 2 plus 5. 12.39. Okay, part D. We need to be able to work out this formula here, which contains dy by dx. So our first thing is to work out dy by dx of this y function here. Bring the power down and reduce the power by 1. 3 over 2 minus 1 is a half. Um, the 3's cancel. The 4 divided by 2 is 2, so we end up with 2 times the square root of x, or 2x to the half. Now to put that into the formula for s, we will be integrating between a and b. That's just here, 2 and 6 for the function which is the square root of 1 plus dy by dx squared, so 2 root x squared. So this is going to be 1 plus 4x to the power of a half. Now if we integrate that, we raise the power by 1, so that's 3 over 2. Divide by the new power, which is the same as timesing by 2 over 3. We leave the inside alone. Then we check for anything that's with the x there. We need to divide by um, uh, the derivative of it. So we need to divide by another 4. So we're going to change that to be a 3 times 4 on the bottom so that we are dividing by an extra 4. So that simplifies to 2 over 12, which is 1 over 6, and we're doing that between 2 and 6. We can bring the 1 sixth outside of that just to save us a little bit of effort. Um, what we will then have is 1 plus 4x, where x is 6, so 6 times 4 is 24, plus 1 is 25. We'll be doing the 25 to the power of 3 over 2. Then if we put a 2 in, we have uh, 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so 9 to the 3 over 2. So 25 to the power of 3 over 2, minus 9 to the power of 3 over 2, is equal to 98, then divide it by 6, we get 16.3. Okay, part E, we have some interesting stuff given to us just here. 
we are going to need to separate variables on that. So bring all the y things to the left and all the x things to the right. So we'll have a 1 over y dy is equal to cot x over 1 minus sine squared x dx. Now that other part, let's see if we can simplify that. So cot is 1 over tan. 1 minus sine squared is cos squared. Then this next step is actually really tricky to spot, and it's to see that there is actually a relationship, a deriv derivative relationship between these two things. 1 over cos squared is the same as saying sec squared x. So we can write this as sec squared x over tan x. Now the reason to do that is we're about to integrate both sides and now we have something where the top is the derivative of the bottom and that's a particular kind of thing that we can integrate into being the natural log of the bottom. On the left, this bit here, um, if we integrate um, y to the minus, uh, sorry, 1 over y, then we get the natural log of y and we'll have a plus c at the end. So then y is equal to e to the um, log tan x, oops, tan x plus c, which is the same as if we were to times it by e to the c, and e to the c is itself a constant, so we will just call that an a at the beginning. Um, e and natural log, um, cancel each other out just here. So a will be equal to a tan of x. Now when x is pi by 4, y is equal to 3. So 3 equals a tan pi by 4. Well tan of pi divided by 4 is 1. So a equals 3. When x is pi by 3, we have y is equal to 3 tan pi by 3. So tan of pi divided by 3 and then times it by 3 is equal to 5.196. Okay, question three. Um, this I'm just going to turn into the integral of x cubed over 3 minus 3x three to the minus 3. So we raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, we will end up with 12 on the bottom, minus x, raise the power by 1, we get minus 2, divide by the new power, we're dividing by minus 2, is going to get us to this. Okay, we want to make sure that the area that we've got comes to 15. If we integrate 8 over x plus 1 dx from 0 to k, we will get 8 natural log x plus 1. Um, between 0 and k, and we want to set that equal to 15. Now, um, if I put k in, I will have 8 log k plus 1. If I put 0 in, it will, be, it will give me log of 1, which comes to 0, so I don't need that bit. We're just equal to 15. So 15 divided by 8, um, k plus 1 will be equal to e to the 1.875. So k will then uh, be that take away 1. Right, part C. We have this differential equation. Um, we're going to need to separate the variables because we've got um, the h over on the right and we need it on the left where the dh is. So that's... Um, at the moment, it's negative h to the half. 
um, we're going to bring it over to the left hand side to so be negative one over um, actually I don't need to take the negative let's let's start over so we've got dh by dt is equal to negative a half times root h so if I take the h over to the left hand side that's going to become 1 over root h and bring the dt up over to the right hand side and times it 1 over root h is h to the minus a half we're going to integrate both sides if I integrate h to the minus a half, we raise the power by 1 is a half, divide by the new power, so dividing by a half is the same as timesing by 2. Um, a half integrated with respect to t is just minus half t, and then we have a plus c. Now, information from the question to work out the c. At the start, the wine level is 1 at 1 meter. So when t equals 0, we have. Um, h is 1, so 2 times 1 to the half is equal to minus a half times 0 plus c. Um, so then c must be 2. Finally, how long will it take to go, go to empty? Well, empty means the height is 0. So for h equals 0, we will have 2 times 0 is equal to minus a half t plus c which was the 2 so half t would be equal to 2 t is equal to 4 and this is measured in minutes okay for part d we have um, acceleration and we want to find distance so we're thinking about kinematics before we can find distance um, from acceleration, we need to go through the middle step of finding the velocity. So to find the velocity, we will integrate um, the acceleration function. Okay, so um, for that, we have um, the E function. The function itself doesn't change, um, but we divide through by the derivative of the inside which is minus 0 0.3 so 3 divided by negative 0 0.3 is minus 10 plus c now we need some information from the question to be able to work out the plus c what we've got is that the car accelerates from an intersection so we can assume that it starts um, at uh, stationary so when t equals 0, the velocity equals 0. So if we were to put that into um, this equation just here, we would end up with e to the 0. Actually, let me write that out. So 0 equals minus 10 e to the minus 0 0.3 times 0 plus c. So e to the 0 is equal to 1. So C must be 10. Now we can um, integrate again to get the distance. So we integrate um, minus 10 e to the no, minus 0 0.3 t plus 10 that we just worked out. Okay, e to the minus 0 0.3 um, t, that bit doesn't change. Um, and we will divide the minus 10 by the minus 0 0.3. We've got 100 over 3 plus 10 T plus C. Okay, back to the question. How far has it traveled in the fourth second? Okay, so actually we don't need to work out the plus C on this one. We need to work out the integral in the fourth second means between the third and fourth marker of our time. That bit can sometimes be a bit tricky for people to figure out uh, what number, but think about what you would mean if you were talking about the first second. So from zero, the first second is everything up to one. The second second is everything up to two. So first, second, third, 
So the fourth would be between three and four. Okay, let's carry on with that. So substituting in, oh, I should have put the, whoops, hang on, messed up my notation. The three and the four should have gone there. So this is now square brackets, three and four. Okay, um, let's do our substitution. So we're gonna put four in, we get 100 over three, um, e to the minus 0 0.3 times 4 plus 10 times 4 minus 100 over 3 e to the minus 0 0.3 times 3 um, plus 10 times 3. And I'll just pause while I pop that in the calculator because there's quite a bit. So we get 6.49 meters. Okay, part E, we've been given a proportional um, equation, a differential equation that shows proportionality between the population and its growth. We want an expression for P in terms of K. So let's um, do some separating variables. We want to take one over P to the left hand side, bringing the P over. We'll leave k sine kt where it is and bring the dt up and over to the right. We integrate both sides. So that means that the natural log of p is equal to the integral of k sine kt. So sine integrates to negative cos. And then we would have the k on the outside divided by this k from differentiating the inside doing reverse chain rule. So that cancels and we are left with just minus cos kt and then plus c. Now the information we have in the question is that uh, the population numbered 25 at the beginning of the study. Um, okay, so let's do one more step. Uh, we can turn p into e to the minus cos kt plus c. Now when you have that plus c in the power, it's the same as timesing by e to the c on the outside, and this itself is just a constant, so we have a constant being times by e to the minus cos kt. Now um, when t is 0, population is equal to 25. So we have um, 25 equals a e to the minus cos of k times 0. So that's cos of 0. Well, cos of 0 is 1. So this is e to the minus 1. Now, e to the minus 1 is the same as being a fraction of a over e. So we can bring the e up and times it by the 25. And we get a is equal to 25e. So our final expression for p is p is equal to 25e times e to the minus cos of kt. Now if we need that in um, its full decimal form, um, if you need to put e into the calculator as a singular e, do e to the power of 1. So that would be, say, 68 e to the minus cos kt. Okay, now what's the maximum um, that could occur? Now, maximums happen when the derivative is equal to zero. Um, now we've got a function for uh, dp by dt already up here, so let's use that. So that happens when kp sine kt equals zero. Well, the p can't be zero, So therefore, we're looking at what happens when k sine kt equals zero. And in the question, we're told that k is positive. So k can't be the zero part. So sine of kt 
must be zero. Thinking about the sine curve that goes like this, it's zero at the beginning, but that's not helpful to us. Um, we want to know when is it zero there, that's going to be at pi. So kt must be equal to pi, t is equal to pi over k. Now that's when it happens, but we want the actual maximum number of the population. So we've just got one more step. So when t is pi by k, p is equal to 68 e to the minus cos k times pi by k. So that k cancels. We have cos of pi. Um, that's a negative one. It's going to be made into a negative by because we're doing minus of that number. So minus our answer gives us a plus one. We have 68 e to the 1 which is 184.8, or rounding because this is a population, 185. And that's us done.